you you want a statement to start off with a statement or you just want us to ask you y'all fire them off i don't have a statement today <laughs> um now that the season's over with you've been able to uh review what is the uh can you talk about the need you got this off season what you guys are looking at yeah uh hadn't hat really changed of course uh recruiting 24 7 keeping a eye on this transfer portal. Uh, I think that we've got a lot of great pieces returning. Uh, we are in the middle of uh, today, kind of got messed up with the school shutting down today, and we had to, we're going to have to cancel a few of our uh, uh, players' meetings today. And then, of course, we're off Friday, and a few guys had already told them they could go home. So, anyway, it's going to delay some of our, some of our, roster updates uh, maybe we can do this again next week and i'll as i told you by friday of this week we would have some roster updates but of course with the unforeseen weather but anyway with that being said uh really working the transfer portal hard uh, recruiting hard um uh got to get we we really want to sign a point guard uh want to sign a uh and we've got an offer out to be honest with you um uh of course, can't comment on that until something's done, but who it, who it is, but we got an offer out. Um, uh, need, need, to, need to get somebody that's uh, a bucket getter, somebody that can go help us get baskets at the end of the shot clock, create their own, and we want to sign a big body big. Those are our three priorities for this offseason. Um, uh, so, so working that hard, again, the transfer portal, as we all anticipated, is just – blowing up as we speak uh unbelievable amount of guys in the transfer portal so you know we but one thing that that kind of gets left out is this is a great opportunity uh to get a high level high school kid because those those that's the group that has been uh, affected by this the most um and of course uh junior college players are second so most of your mid majors and high majors are going to be recruiting the transfer portals there's not going to be a lot of spots available. Of course, everybody has to try to recruit their own players first, then the transfer portals, then 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 junior college players, then then of course high school players. So uh, those those guys, it's very unfortunate for those guys coming out of high school. Although I look at it as an opportunity uh, to get some high level guys uh, if we if we can uh, have enough scholarships to go to the to the high school ranks. But anyway, that's that's kind of been our our mine and my staffs. Uh, uh, total focus uh, since the season was over with, of course, and um, uh, spending spending some long, long days uh, on the phone with guys and people around them, trying to trying to get some recruiting done that we're not able to do in person. I, I'm I feel like that we're at our best in person because I think that uh, people can see, you know, our sincerity and uh, and it's difficult, but but you know we do just like with you guys. It's I, I'd rather talk to y'all face to face, but it's. Uh, we have to, of course, do it by Zoom or, or FaceTime or, or just phone calls. But anyway, been a, been a real, real hectic last couple of uh, – or last week or so since we've returned. Coach, to kind of um, to build off that question, can you talk about some, some things you'd like to do down the road maybe offensively that maybe you didn't have the personnel to do this season? That you well, like do? I, I, yeah, we want to play. Uh, we've got to we, – we've got to – you know, he – I wish I had, I wish I'd have thought about, I mean, uh, Glenn, I wish I'd have thought about bringing it down. We were, our margin of defeat last year was two point, I think it was 2.3 points. And, you know, so many games that we couldn't close out, we're there at the end, but one of the, uh, and defensively, I, I felt like, I mean, we, we, we almost had to be perfect. And I, I'm expounding on the point you're making. For, and, and we were good uh, defensively. Our, our number, you know, after having a chance to evaluate our numbers, we were we for a small team. We rebounded the ball well. Um, uh, defensively, we were we were at the top of the league and almost all. You know, and I say the top don't mean the number one, but in the top top quarter third of the league and almost all defensive categories. Um, so we played. We defended well enough. I, I was I was pleased, but but offensively. Uh, our lack of consistency on the offensive end is, is what ended up, uh, you know, costing us so many of these close games. And when you talk about the margin 
uh, two point three points, kind of being being you know you're talking about one or two possessions every single game. It's it's a razor thin margin. So we have to get better offensively. The way that we have to do that, of course, evaluating what we're doing, but we have to. That that's why I, I used the term getting a bucket getter. We we've, we've got to recruit players that have the ability to score and shoot the basketball. Um, and and it's it's very very difficult with uh, uh, the level of coaching and and scouting to to manufacture or create a basket out of your offense every single time down the floor. Some of those times have got to be in transition and got to score. Of course, you know, kind of looking back on this season and, it, and it's disappointing, you know, uh, Ladavius Drain didn't just didn't have his best year. And then what a great kid. I, there was nobody, everybody, little Lord, pulling for him, just could never quite get untracked. A lot of that had to do with our – uh, other guys' inability to create for him because he's a catch shoot guy. He needed other guys to be able to help him, help him get off shots, and and uh, we just didn't quite have that. I, I thought I thought our guys did well. I thought they improved throughout the year, but uh, anyway, that's a that's a big address for us is uh, is through recruiting is the ability recruiting guys that have the ability to score. So. Um, like, like I said, we're going to, we're going to, I feel very confident we can always put our guys in the right system. And, and, and you mentioned style, uh, you know, we want to play fast. We want to, cause I think that's a great time to scores in that early offense. Um, but, but of course you, that's, you know, we got it. We got to have the, the guys to be able to do it. We tried it and, uh, and, and, but that didn't mean, I don't, I don't think we'd have been any better off walking the ball down the floor either. So anyway, I, I think we just have to. We've got to continue to get better, better, better players, and that's through recruiting. Coach, uh, kind of talk a little bit about the stats there at the end of the season, and you look at somebody like a Tyler Stevenson, who, with his stats, didn't make you know all CUSA. Can you? You didn't. I don't know if you got a chance to speak on that. Yeah. Uh, I think it was an absolute crime. Uh, I'm going to just say, I mean, he, here's a guy, he's in the top of the league in scoring, rebounding, uh, 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 field goal percentage, uh, was the, was the target of, of, especially in the second half of the season, every other team's defensive game plan. Um, I don't know what else, you, what else you can do. Uh, he deserved it. Uh, he got he it was it was taken it, I say it was taken from him it wasn't taken from him because he never had it but uh, it, he, he he was very deserving he was as deserving as anybody hell I thought he should have been first team um, but anyway um, may, maybe uh, I, knowing Tyler he he's an humble kid and uh, but but I can tell you this he's competitive and maybe next year as we roll into these I'm gonna remind him and I'm certain he'll it'd be something he never forget these are the same guys that didn't vote for you for all conference last year so let's go make them pay and uh, try to turn a negative into a positive but I'm uh, I'm glad you brought that up Heath because it's uh I, I don't I don't know what else you could do uh and and still not get it and I, I just think it it's 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 just not right Jay back to um recruiting I think uh April fourteenth is your uh, your signing date that Wednesday. Yes, and it's starting to starting to uh, get some steam that they're probably going to get rid of that dead period after uh, back into June where you guys can actually go go see kids again. That yeah. kind of puts you in limbo with how many you actually want to nail down for that April period. Yeah, you know it, it's 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 gosh, it's a gamble now. You know, um, you know what do you what do you do? And again. It, he, I mean, Glenn, you're keeping up with it, and you see this transfer. I mean, literally, I was looking at just just before David came up to my office to bring me down for this. I mean, just even this morning. I mean, it's 20, 30, 40 guys a day rolling into that thing, and and that's as play, coaches are having their, uh, of course, their meetings with their players. But it's it's going to be a record breaker this year. So you know what what the the unknown and all of it is is. What do you take? You know, so I'm, I'm, we're, we're trying to be very disciplined about what positions that we know we feel like that we've got a great cast back, and what exact what will help us get to where we can compete for that conference championship next year. And so we're trying to be very, very focused on on that. And I'll be honest with you, I don't. It doesn't matter to me uh, really as much maybe as is to some coaches who have put it out there whether it's a transfer or a junior college guy. 
or a high school guy. We're just looking for the right guy that can help us compete for the league championship. And and we know with a, with the right class, we, we we felt like we had a great class last year. In fact, four of the, four of the five guys on the floor at the end of the game the other day against Rice were all guys from this year's recruiting class playing their first year of Division One basketball. So that that was encouraging. And um, all getting some great experience. And, you know, next year, of course, they're going to be older and wiser and, and better, um, bigger and stronger, and, you know, all, all the things that come with experience. But we, we still got to get those three things I've already talked about, that point guard, a bucket getter, and, and, and of course, a, a big guy, all of them, certainly with the ability to score, but somebody that can really score. And I think that we'll have a chance. I really do. So uh, I, I'm, not as, I'm not as caught up. I, it, if it's the right guy, we'll take him then. Glenn, if it's if 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 it's not, we're going to keep working because there you're going to have more options this year as a Division One coach than at any time in the history of Division One basketball. You know, more options to to choose from, and so like you, we don't want to settle if if it's someone that that we're you know not just a hundred percent away. Whereas maybe in the past you've had to kind of say, well, this is the this is the a limited pool. This is the best of that pool. The pools wide this year and it's going to stay that way for a long time i've even told high school players that we were recruiting that you know of course they they're very aware of, of what's going on too and say that you know for a high school player the recruitment will be the slowest it's ever been meaning there's going to be kind of as everything sifts through and rolls downhill it may you know you may get an offer in july and uh, you see, and, and so it may not be a bad option for you to take a junior college offer, you know, because you can you can still come to Division One even if you've signed a junior college scholarship. You may want to take that scholarship this year to give yourself a insurance policy. You may, you know, so it, there's a lot of strategy goes involved with it. But the pool, the pool will be uh, the old Hattiesburg YMCA pool. Glenn is going to be open a lot deeper into the uh, the fall than it was uh, as we were growing up, you know. So anyway. Coach, uh, you, you talked a little bit about that, but the dead period and going out, you guys being able to – how important is it for you to get out and see the players? Because well, instead it, of watching them on yeah. film and – I mean, that's got to be killing to a recruiter. It, well, it is. You can't watch them in person. I, and, and you know, you know what you can't tell on film, Heath, is I like to look at body language. I like to look at them warm up. I like to look at their how they interact with the officials, uh, uh, you know, with their, their general attitude. That's what you miss. And, and, and you can, you can talk around people and you can do all your background work and, but, but there's nothing like having your eyes on them and you can get fooled a lot on film too. Uh, of course, film is the, the best that we have at the moment, but, uh, but uh, we're hoping that of course, that, that this thing changes in June uh, and we're going to get a chance to get out and see some guys, you know, another thing, they can't come to campus. They can't, uh, we can't look them eye to eye and, and, and see what kind of person they are. How I mean, it just it makes it very difficult, and and uh, it, it just it leaves a lot of lot to chance uh, than, than having to be able to to be able to see them uh, eye to eye and, and uh, get your eyes on them. But uh, you know, of course, everybody we we think everybody's in the same boat. I I worry about all the schools not following the rules as we do. But anyway. It, that I can't control that, but yeah, it, it hurts. I hope, hopefully they'll open this thing up and, and then we can, we can get some, some, some clarity on some guys. Jay, what's, what's your okay. message to some of your guys, the guys that were here for the first time last year, like a Pierre, uh, uh, guys like that. What's your message then when you sit down with them say, you know, here's where you are, here's where I think you need to move your game to the next level. You know, very you very constructively critical, uh, of course, uh, you know, the, I think the great thing about all of our guys that we've met with so far has been the, the incredible positivity that they, they've had, you know, and you could, you know, I, I think even, even on this, people have asked me, well, is the team, you know, I know Charlie uh, Latrell, I don't think Charlie's on here today, but I, I remember asked one time, well, Coach, how do y'all do keep going? You've, you've lost a few games in a row. First of all, we, we were losing to some good teams, but, but, uh, with that, I mean, our guys, I thought we played the second half. I thought the first 14, 15 minutes of the second half against Rice was the best we played all year on both ends of the floor. And so they, they, the, the fight was there. They, they, they were hurt after that game. You know, when a guy's invested, he's, it, it bothers him to lose. 
And uh, so I, I was really, I, I have been incredibly pleased with, they want, they, they, they feel we're, we're building something. They, they, it is what it is. And, and, and of course we didn't win as many games as anybody wants us to win, but most of all us, <laughs> you know, it I, I don't, that, that the fan base expects us to be undefeated at Southern Miss, you know, every year we understand that. But, and, and I don't feel any of that pressure, but, I know they want to, and they're disappointed, but there's no one more disappointed than our guys, which and if they're disappointed, you're going to be motivated. So they're, I, the incredible positivity that they have uh, uh, exhibited, everybody's ready. Coach, when are we starting back? Uh, you know, let's get, let's go to work. And, and of course, just as you've already mentioned, naturally as part of the process, Hey, Hey, Jerron, you've got to cut down on turnovers. We're using him in his example, Jerron, you've got to cut down on turnovers. You've got to become more consistent. Again, you're talking about a true freshman. Uh, you, you've got to make better decisions with the basketball, continue to improve your overall team understanding of, of, of defense, of, of, of be more consistent shooting the three, all of them, all of them, me and all of our staff players all have a lot of room for improvement. Um, but we also have a lot to, to build on too. And um, that's the exciting thing. And that's why, again, kind of we circle back to the recruiting. We, we feel like that we're two or three key guys away from, from, from competing for the championship is what we mean. We were competitive as far as game. We want, we want to compete for championship. Competitive is not is unacceptable at Southern Miss. You talk about you talk about playing older teams. Uh, one more season for these young guys in the weight room to physically mature has got to be big for them. I would think, especially a guy like Jerron, maybe and Mark yeah. Jackson. You know, if you'll if you'll go back and uh, and Mark. By the way, Mark Jackson is going to be a good player, uh, really good. Y'all can mark my word on that one. But if you go back from to last summer or when we signed them, first of all, our guys left about this time last year for spring break with the understanding that we'd be back the next Sunday and we would be starting. Well, they never came back. And, and, you know, and we didn't, we didn't actually get, we had about half of them here in July, July one, whereas generally we would have had them June, the rest of the spring, June, July, uh, August. One of the things that I said last year, it hurt this team disproportionately more than it would hurt a normal cycle because we had so many first year guys. So we never got that base put in in the summer of offense, defense, fundamental strength training, agility. We missed all that. And, and because we, they were all so new, then of course we were behind an older team would have been able to um, handle that situation better, those circumstances better. And, 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 but that, I mean, it, it, nobody's fault. And I mean, of course, you know, nobody could have predicted what, what we've had to deal with, but that, that hurt this team disproportionately more because of nine new faces this year, of course, let's knock on wood. We don't have something else <laughs> that puts us out. And as things are beginning to improve, you know, this is going to be our first year round cycle with this team. And, and of course, losing one scholarship player. And then of course, Clay Weatherspoon, who's a, a big loss in itself in terms of his leadership and everything. But, you know, you, you've got almost all your team back. And uh, with the exception of one or two changes that I can update you on ne now next week. But uh, anyway, so we're excited. We've got our core guys that are, are committed. And, uh, you know, it, I'm, I'm, I'm just – I think that our, we've got a chance because of what I just said to really, really show a lot of improvement from this year to next year because this will be the first year we've had them in a full cycle. You know, most, most uh, 70, 75% of the guys that we were talking about before the five that finished the game the other day were, were first-year guys and Tyler. They, you know, they've only been here about seven months, you know, August, August, September, whatever, whatever that is, I guess, uh, roughly about seven months. So, and played in their first – round of the conference play first conference tournament and then that was a that was a i'll be honest with you a huge plus for us was this the opportunity to go there and play in that tournament and now kind of now we got a feel for it and uh so so anyway i'm 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 very very excited about our our possibilities for next year coach you sort of touched on it about jerron i just wanted to ask you further obviously 
the talent that he has, what does he need to do to kind of become a complete player? Um, you talked about the turnovers, but on defense as well, uh, just, I guess, how excited are you for his potential and what does he need to do maybe this off season? Yeah. yeah I think he, first, first of all, he, uh, he's, he's a gym rat. He, he's a, uh, you don't have to tell him to put in work. You know, he, you don't have to motivate him. He's motivating you. He's, he's, he wears our, our, our player development coach, uh, uh, coach Zay Carson, he wears him out about working him out and, 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 and being in, and being in the gym. And so one that, that handles a huge portion of his improvement, but specifically uh, he needs to, again, just grow in basketball. You're talking about an 18 year old, most of the time playing against 21, 22, 23 year old guys out there. Uh, for instance, uh, Javion Hamlet from from North Texas, who 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 Jerron guarded. I mean, you're talking about the conference player of the year. You're talking about you know a guy that's that's been in played college basketball for four years. You know, uh, played on NCAA now NCAA tournament team conference championship. So you know, it, it it's like it's like a man man and boy out. You know, man and boy out there. It's just it's a you got a grown man against a young kid is what it is. But so. That a lot of that will come through experience. He got an incredible amount of experience as a freshman, of course. Uh, the, the raw talent is there, but his continued to grow, grow the game. His basketball IQ is very intelligent, young man. Basketball IQ, uh, offensively, of course, his his ability to he can shoot the three. He needs to get more consistent. His numbers say that. Uh, if you, if you look at his statistics, his numbers say. I mean, he he he's a little too much feast or famine. And meaning that he, he's he's really going or he, he's not. He's got to get better at his shooting basketball. He's, of course, he needs to uh, reduce his turnovers. One of the reasons he turns the ball over, he turned the basketball over too much, is that he he's he's so aggressive. He wants to make a play every time. It's not like high school where, you, you know, that you don't have a secondary defender. And meaning that he goes by his guy in high school. You go by his guy, you generally go all the way to the rim. In, in, in college, you go by your guy, there's a 6'11 or a 7-foot guy sitting there waiting on you or a 6'8", 6'9", forward. And so now you have to turn and pass the basketball. You've got to quickly decide who, whose man that is and being able to deliver the ball to him. That's just part of a normal growth for him or any other of our young guys. And, uh, and then, of course, defensively, uh, you see so many different actions. Uh, uh, and, and it, you know, again, in high school, it's more – Hey Taylor, I'm gonna come guard you, and 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 that's kind of the extent of it. Whereas here, he's there. There's so many different offensive uh, sequences and actions that you you've got to be really locked in and guard multiple actions over the course of one possession. And the fact of getting, you know, I've got a responsibility to get back, stop the ball, and transition defense. There, there, there's just a lot to throw at him. Eventually, that game's gonna start slowing down for him, and uh, I think that he's got a chance. To be honest with you, to be a pro. I really do. He's he's got that type of potential. He's got the work ethic. Um, how, how much he he and he 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 doesn't mind being coached. So uh, he's a little, uh, you know, he he's like a lot of kids. Sometimes doesn't understand it, but I, I, he got better and better as the game, or excuse me, as the season went on. So great, great future in front for that young man. All right, coach, how you doing? First off, good. Hey, um, Austin. I want to just start by asking this. You talked about margin of defeat, um, and it was by a small, uh, a small, small encounter of like two point three points. Two point three points, I yeah. believe, is what it was. Yeah. So I kind of want to get to the point of coming into next season. How do you plan on correcting those mistakes coming down the stretch? All right. Good. Good question, Austin. Uh, uh, several things. One, uh, what what to to win, you have to uh, be able to identify what causes losing. And what causes losing, uh, first of all, on the defensive end is, is, is giving up open shots and, and second shots. So even though our defense was we, we thought was adequate this year, it was good, it's got to continue to get better because that's the equalizer as this team matures. And, of course, it, we, we all know that it's a very, very young basketball team in terms of, of Division I experience. And so, so anyway, we, we want to continue to get better. This is how we can do that. We, we, of course, continue to improve our defense, continue to, to emphasize defense and rebounding and hold teams 
you know, to, to 40% or less, you know, we gave up just a little over 40%, which was again, I think fourth or fifth in the league. So, so we're good there, but still can get better offensively. We've got to do a better job of being more efficient on offense. We, we, we turn the basketball basketball over again, talking about identifying things that cause losing, you know, when you turn the basketball over, too many times and what's an acceptable number in a division one game our our thing is if we can we feel like of course don't like any of them but we feel like that if we can not turn the basketball over more than 10 times 10 times 10 is kind of our 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 acceptable number of a turnovers you're going to turn it over a few times during the game but 10 and we had too many games where where we turned the basketball over that much and, uh, and then, of course, our, our, our development, our either recruitment or development of the guys that we have to be able to just score the ball better. We shot the ball at too low a percentage. I, in general, our shot selection was pretty good. Uh, it wasn't that we were shooting poor shots. We just didn't, we just didn't make enough shots. I mean, it sounds kind of simple, but uh, if, if you went back and had the luxury of I do and, and be able to review our films, and, and again, I'll use Rice. I mean, we missed we – missed, we had the right people shooting the basketball. We just – we just – didn't make enough of them. So, so through recruiting, getting more players uh, and, and, and being able to knock down more of those shots, which I think will come with the game slowing down with experience, Austin, I think it would be a way that we can make up that very small margin. And that's going to be a big emphasis for us in the offseason as fellas. There, there's no – that first possession of the game where we're casual with the ball and we throw it away or, you know, I, I, don't, I don't jump off two feet and shoot a power layup and we don't – we miss it. That's just as critical as that one at the end of the game against UAB where, where we, you know, throw an errant pass, the ball goes off Drain's hands, and we don't shoot, make a shot to beat them or, or the last shot at, 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 uh, at Louisiana Tech where we got the ball to win. Those, those are just as critical. So it, the margin of error is very thin, and, and, and there can be no small details when it comes to winning. And, and next season has started now. The minute we walked off that floor, is the, the, the next season has started. So – I'm, I'm, I'm just chomping at the bits to get started. Anything else? Coach, before you go, I know things are different with COVID and all that, but you guys normally have like some summer basketball camps. I wonder if there's anything like that happening. This well, they're not. Uh, uh, our, our, my basketball administrator, of course, my boss is, is Jeremy McLean and Dr. Bennett, but my, our basketball administrator is Jeff Mitchell. Y'all know Jeff, I would assume. He's assistant athletic director. So he is my direct boss. He's, he's over men's basketball. And uh, Jeff told that Jeff, uh, of course, our basketball camps are uh, recruiting tools. Okay. Uh, 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 having a, a high school team camp and, and not only are they good public relations for the university and for the basketball program, but they're recruiting tools. And that's a way you talk about getting Heath mentioned about getting our eyes on guys you know, uh, we can get, uh, let's say, Bluxy High School, Bluxy, let's just say Bluxy has a recruit, you get them up to team camp. Well, you can watch that young man uh, legally play five or six games against some of the other best teams in Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, Tennessee, wherever they come in from, uh, multiple recruits in a very short period of time, and they get a chance to see, you, you know, your facilities, university, your, your coaching staff. It is critical for a school like Southern Miss that we're able to have our basketball camps. And of course, the, the, the service to the community with the little fellas and, you know, the, the, the little guys that come in. I mean, it's just, it hurts us to not be able to do that. And, and, and not that you, there's a ton of money generated from that, but that's also how we're able to supplement some of our staff uh, coaches, uh, the support staff guys that, that don't make a lot of money, you know, and, and, and it, 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 it hurt, you know, they're just, it just hurt us in a lot, a lot of ways. So anyway, there, our school uh, wants to have them. We're waiting. I think there, he, he, he said, get, go ahead and get all your information ready. Our information is ready to be mailed out to every high school in Mississippi, Louisiana, Tennessee, Alabama, uh, uh, and the Florida panhandle. We've got it set, ready to go labeled. And we're just simply waiting on the word. And uh, I, he, he's, I, I know this, we, the, the school understands it. If it's up to our athletic administration, we're going to be able to have our full uh, array, array of camps. They're just waiting on some, some other uh, people that make those decisions uh, so they can okay it. But I'm glad you brought that up because our intent is to be able to have them. I and our phone is ringing off the hook 
uh, like, Coach, are you are we going to have our camps this you know this year? So, ho ho I got my fingers crossed, Taylor, that we're going to.